This is Bill Powers with MiningStockEducation.com discussing three secret places professional mining stock investors put their money. These places are secret not because they can't be discovered, but because the average mining investor is not aware of them. The professional mining stock investor, however, knows about them, looks for them, and utilizes them to profit. Although very important, the secret places we are talking about are not a location on the boom-bust commodity cycle or in a certain mining jurisdiction. The three places are locations on the life cycle of a mine. They are places of the optimum combination of risk-reward for the natural resource investor, a sweet spot, so to speak. Places where the upside profit potential is great, yet some of the risk factor is lessened. They are places where the reward outweighs the risk, and when the risk inherent in these places is overcome, the rewards on the other side are substantial. Let's begin by looking at the life cycle of a mine. After a management team conceives of an exploration project, they begin examining the surface geology, collecting samples, and conducting various tests to determine where to begin drilling. After drilling, the explorer may or may not find a deposit. But when a deposit is discovered, even more drilling and assessment needs to be done to determine the deposit's type and size and if it's economically viable. More evaluation in the form of scoping studies, pre-feasibility studies, and resource drilling is undertaken. If these studies and drill results come back positive, the process continues. The mining company must undertake a feasibility study which outlines how the mine will be built and more definitively proves that the mineral is extractable and economical. The company also must apply for permits to the pertinent regulatory bodies in the jurisdiction the proposed mine is to be built in. Both permitting and the feasibility study take several years and millions of dollars. The feasibility study is also called a bankable study because it is proof that you can make money with the discovered mineral deposit so you can take it to the bank for a loan to build the mine. If permitting and financing are obtained after the feasibility study is completed, the mine can now be developed. This process takes several years and there are usually many roadblocks to overcome during the mine's construction. Many projects fail at this step. Building a mine is a huge project management challenge. There are numerous issues that can derail it. Social, technical, geographical, environmental, financial, and the list goes on. Often at the feasibility or development stage of the process, it should be noted, a major producer will purchase the project from a junior mining company, although this does not always happen. If everything continues smoothly and the mine is built, the mine eventually goes into pre-production and then into full commercial production. Years into the mine's life, an extension plan may be undertaken to lengthen the life of the mine. After the resources of the mine are depleted, the mine is closed and the land is reclaimed back to its natural pre-mining habitat. The first place we will examine that mining stock pros seek to invest is at the exploration and early discovery evaluation stage. This is the riskiest of the three places we will examine, but we will discuss some things to look for to minimize risk and also when to sell after profiting from an upward share price move. Although highly speculative, the extraordinarily high returns possible make deploying some capital here worth it. The overwhelming majority of explorers fail. For example, only one out of 2,000 exploration companies will ever find 1 million ounces of gold. That's 0.05% of explorers. And only one out of three of those discoveries will ever turn into an economical mine and begin production. We will now look at the locations of the three sweet spots for mining stock investing by looking at them on Brent Cook's Life Cycle of a Mine chart. The time to buy in is at the exploration and early discovery stage, but not too far after an initial discovery is made. Look to invest in intelligent, previously successful management teams with a lot of skin in the game who are exploring in friendly jurisdictions historically known to contain the desired mineral. As an investor, you want the management to get rich off of their stock and options holdings in the exploration company, but not through their annual salaries. This way, they are motivated to discover a mineral deposit and thereby make money through an increase in the share price of the company, which benefits you, the investor. After the initial discovery drill results come back positive and are made known to the public through press releases, the share price will begin to rise. 
As more positive assessments and drill results are publicized, the excitement and speculative money will continue to pour into the shares. Exploration companies can multiply in value 10 to even 100 times in value during this period of time, depending on the believed quality and size of the deposit and the current market price of the discovered commodity. But the current speculator-inflated share price will not last for too long because there are still expensive and time-consuming roadblocks that stand in the way of a producing mine. This is something the professional mining stock investor understands that the amateur does not. You want to exit your position here and harvest your gains before the speculators lose interest and realize production is a far ways off. As the project moves on to a critical but less exciting phase of development, the share price drops significantly. The share price often drops not just because of disinterest and realism which has set in, but also because the company may dilute the shares through public and private offerings in order to raise funds to conduct a feasibility study, obtain permitting, and construct the mine. This process takes years and costs millions and millions of dollars. The project could fail at any time during this phase, which is another reason to harvest your profits earlier in the mine life cycle. As discussed earlier, most explorers never find an economical mineral deposit that becomes a mine. Therefore, most investors lose money speculating on explorers. But there are certain opportune times to invest in explorers where the investor can have a reduced risk, yet still have tremendous upside potential of a possible discovery. In my opinion, this is truly the sweet spot of junior explorer speculation if you can handle the risk and invest cash that you realize you may never see again. Let me explain. If you invest in an explorer while the underlying commodity they are searching for is rising in price, the explorer itself will rise in share price even if no discovery is made or positive drill results are released. Speculators are buying the shares because the potential value of the undiscovered mineral deposit is theoretically rising because the value of the commodity itself is increasing in price. The upward trending commodity itself lowers your risk of loss because the shares appreciate regardless of discovery or not. So if you are convinced of the fundamentals for a rising commodity price, then investing in the explorers searching for that commodity possesses less risk than if the underlying commodity was not increasing in price. This is extremely effective if you have discerned a cyclical bottom of a given commodity and have taken positions in explorers at or near the bottom. Last January 2016, I bought positions in both silver producers and explorers because I believe silver had reached a multi-year bottom and would soon be rising in price. Over the next several months, the share price of one silver explorer I owned tripled in price with no significant news of a discovery. When this happens, you're able to sell some of the shares and recoup your initial investment if you desire and then enjoy a free ride up with the shares you still own. You now have no risk, yet much potential upside. If a discovery is made, you reap the benefits. But if nothing amounts of the exploration or company, you lose nothing at this point. As long as the underlying commodity is not falling in price dramatically, there is also a possible, but less certain way you can see an explorer share price rise significantly, even before results of a drill program come back. When well-known management who have made previous successful discoveries start an exploration company and they also have an excellent marketing plan, their reputation coupled with the excitement that their promotional activities generate can cause the share price to rise even before any evidence of a discovery is released. Expectation drives the share price of speculative stocks, so by talking up the company's potential, they can raise expectation, which then raises the share price. This allows investors who bought in early the possibility of selling off some of their shares at a nice profit. In this way, you can reduce your risk while still possessing upside potential. Accredited investors in particular have an advantage. If they have invested early on through private placements at a low price per share and were also awarded warrants in addition to their shares, they can take advantage of reducing risk by selling off some of their shares before it is determined if the exploration will be successful or not. Yet they still have that upside potential in the shares and warrants that they keep. The next sweet spot on the mine life cycle has a much lower risk level compared to buying exploration companies, yet it still possesses significant upside potential. Mining stock professional investors look to invest here. Unlike with speculative pre-discovery explorers, at this location on the mine life cycle, there is more concrete data the investor can analyze to determine the value and potential of a company.
During the development phase, the share price drifted sideways. This happens until about six months before the expected production. So look to invest about six months before the expected start of production. But even with the best estimate of starting production, you can be wrong because the production can be pushed back due to various setbacks. The project could even still fail and possibly never come into production, so there is still risk at this point. Look to invest in undervalued companies with excellent growth prospects. The market at this point does not credit the company full value for its reserves or any projected growth until the company begins producing. This is what makes investing here sweet, because when the company does overcome the hurdle of developing the mine and then begins producing, the market revalues its reserves higher and the share price rises significantly. Also after beginning production, institutional money will now flow into the stock, pushing it higher. Professional mining stock investors are always on the lookout for reserves that have not yet been revalued so they can make a profit when they are revalued. Mining stocks are revalued after they overcome the various risk hurdles. That is why this location on the mine life cycle is a professional favorite and is considered a sweet spot. If you invest here just slightly before production starts and then the company makes it to production while the underlying commodities price is rising, in just a few years the share price will multiply many times over. This is because both the company's profit margin will increase and thereby reduce risk and also the market will revalue higher the in-ground reserves the company already has according to the now higher commodity price. This combination of newly started production with a rising commodity price is extremely lucrative and is the ideal situation for the investor. There is another sweet spot mining stock pros look for. Remember the professionals look for reserves that have not yet been revalued by the market because there is a risk hurdle in front of the company that still needs to be crossed. The pros invest in companies they believe in before the hurdle is overcome and then profit when the company is revalued. The professionals try to find undervalued near-term mid-tier producers. In terms of gold and silver production, a mid-tier can be considered a gold company producing more than 80,000 ounces a year or a silver miner producing more than 3 million ounces per year with a minimum market cap of at least $300 million. A small volume producer is valued lower than a mid-tier producer because they are riskier as they have less cash flow and are heavily dependent on a higher commodity price to stay afloat. If one thing goes wrong with their mine or company, the whole business could be doomed and fail. But when they cross the threshold into becoming a mid-tier producer, the risk is minimized and all of the company's reserves are revalued higher and the stock price jumps significantly. Look to invest in undervalued, soon-to-be mid-tier producers that have good, economically viable properties. They should be located in safe jurisdictions, have excellent management, tight share structure, and strong growth prospects. Before concluding, I'd like to share one more risk-reward sweet spot professional investors look for when the underlying commodity is rising in price, and that is mid-tier producers. Mid-tier producers have better cash flow and are much less risky than small producers, yet have a much larger upside than that of majors. They can grow production quickly through development and acquisition. If you can find an undervalued mid-tier producer with great growth prospects, you will do very well in a commodity boom. When the price of the underlying commodity rises, mid-tiers will be revalued higher because the mining companies are valued according to the current price of the commodity. With higher prices, their mineral reserves are valued higher, their profit margin increases, their risk decreases, and their growth potential increases with more cash reserves. All of this equates to a low-risk, high-reward option for investing in mining stocks. As mentioned at the beginning, the places spoken of in this video could be considered a secret not because they can't be discovered, but because the average mining stock investor is not aware of them and doesn't know how to capitalize on them. The professionals, however, seek to invest at these sweet spots in quality companies in order to capture the most profit potential possible. So for your next mining stock investment, if you don't already, make sure you begin by looking at one of these secret places presented in this video. Doing so will allow you, just like the pros, to capture the most profit potential possible. Thank you for watching this mining stock education video. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow us on Twitter at MiningStockEDU and on the web at MiningStockEducation.com. Learn. 
invest, profit. Thank you.